Welcome to another video analysis with me, Simon Williams, the Ginger GM. And we're now going to look at game of the day from round four of Bill Bauer. And again, there's only one guy we can talk about, Magnus Carlsen, the world champion. Now, it's just amazing. It amazes me that he's won three games in a row. And there's the famous saying that says, it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get up. And uh, apparently that was a saying by Vince Lombardi. No idea who Vince Lombardi is, but it's a great saying. And after Magnus lost his first round, he was certainly knocked down, losing to Nakamura, someone that he has a great score against. But how did he get up? He got up by winning his next three games. And in this game, it was quite remarkable just how easy he made it look. It started off in standard Raul Lopez fashion with Bishop B5. This is a move that I think every beginner should know. It's the most common position in chess and the most common way to start a game. Being played for centuries. Now, A6 used to be the trendy move, but... World champion, ex-world champion Kramnik made the move knight to f6 a popular choice. And he made this popular in his world championship match in 2000 where he defeated Garry Kasparov. And this is the so-called Berlin opening. And there is a, a long ending that White can force here after castling kingside. I'll just show you the line. Castling kingside, knight takes e4, and now something like d4 knight d6, bishop takes c6. This is all what we call theory in chess. Don't worry too much about this. I'm just showing you what lots of grandmasters have played this position here. And already you can see, in my eyes, it's a little bit dull because the queens are off and I love keeping the queens on the board. But this used to be the trendy, popular way of playing. Exchange is off and white try to prove that black's double pawns are a weakness. But just recently, white has been playing the move d3. And this keeps more pieces on the board. It's, I would say, leads to a more tense battle just because the queens are not exchanged. And now they followed some standard developing moves, bishop c5. Magnus here decided to damage Wesley So's pawn structure. Bishop takes c6. Now, normally you take towards the center in chess. But the move d takes c6, not taking towards the center, is a better option because now the bishop can develop very quickly and you've opened up a half open file. This is a good thing to have because you can pressurize along that file with your rook or queen, as Wesley So is intending to do here. On the downside, Black again has doubled his pawns and Magnus is a masterful maneuverer. I mean, in history, they say that Antoly Karpov, the Russian world champion, was a great maneuver, but Carlsen is really taking that position away from him. Now Carlsen continues, Queen e2. This is keeping things flexible because maybe his king will castle queenside, maybe kingside. Queen e7, and Black is doing the same principle here. And now Magnus asks himself, where do my pieces want to go in future? And he realizes a very nice maneuver for this knight. I think lots of people would move it to c3 here without thinking, because this looks very natural. But Magnus realizes on this square, it doesn't have a great future. And instead, he moves it to d2, realizing that later on, this knight will aim for this square here, the f5 square. And it will come to this square via either c4, e3, or even f1, e3. So he's thinking long term about the possibilities, the probabilities, where he wants to put his minor pieces, something we should all do. They now go into a little maneuvering stage. So let's dart through the moves. And here Magnus gains some space with b4, kicking the bishop away. And now we see this knight maneuver. This knight comes to c4, it comes to e3, so it's snaking its way around towards this square. And now Wesley So tries to get some counterplay on the queen side. The knight comes into the position. 
And now black puts his queen on a rather uncomfortable square. I don't really like this move because how does black castle? White opens up the queen side and now white gets his king castled. And here black goes queen f7 aiming to get castled. Now, if black can castle, he will be in a great position. And I really think Magnus' next move is excellent. You have to try to get the smallest of edges from any position. And here, the main advantage white has is that his king is safe. Black's king is not castled. So how do we take advantage of that? Well, first of all, a4 was played. And I really think, again, black should have castled here. And Wesley So, I've realised, has done this in a couple of games in his past. He's not castled when he should have, breaking some of the basic rules of chess. He moves his knight to c5, maybe going for a Magnus Carlsen-like manoeuvre of moving this knight around into a good central square, or maybe just aiming for this a4 square. But it's very slow. Now, a brilliant move from Magnus again. Queen e1, attacking the rook, and breaking the pin on his knight. So now this knight can move. Now here b6 was played. Taking the pawn on a4. Very dangerous because Magnus could take and go queen a5. And the queen is ready to infiltrate into black's position. So Wesley So plays b6. And a brilliant move here. I love the way Magnus moves his knight. It's like harmony in this game look at this knight it's done a beautiful route to this square and now the other knight because it's not in a pin starts to dance knight to d2 coming around to this square wesley so thinks okay i will win this pawn otherwise my whole strategy is not working but now knight to c4 lovely move ignoring the threat to the rook on a1 but aiming with both of these beautifully positioned knights to crack down on d6. And here, if black had, well, not win, but played rook takes a1, knight takes d6 check, followed by knight takes d6 check, creates what we call a fork, a threat against two pieces, which would win the black queen. So now Wesley plays a very passive move, bishop f8, not a good idea, King safety is the most important thing in chess. Magnus develops and defends his rook. And the king comes into the middle. Sometimes brave play can be foolhardy play. And that's the case here. Magnus moves his queen into the game. Because in order to create a checkmate idea, you normally need your queen being active. And again, his pieces are harmonising. They're all coming towards the middle. All coming towards good squares. Black now cracks under pressure. Knight takes e4. Clearly a losing move. But it was already a very tricky position. Because white has ideas here of playing something like bishop takes c5. And eventually getting a rook to the back rank. Landing that touchdown. And what could black play here? Well if he took the rook on a1. White simply takes back and that rook is ready either to come to a8 or even to a7, which would create ideas of knight takes b6 check. Again, devastating attack. But after knight takes e4, white now plays very nicely because if he takes the knight on e4 here, well, his c4 knight will drop. But first of all, he gets rid of of some of these pawns which are giving protection to the black king. He first plays knight takes b6 check. Then he takes on e4, getting his piece back. Black desperately tries to swap queens off. A good idea when you're being attacked. Magnus has none of it and he keeps the queens on the board. Which he should do because the black king is so exposed. The black king tries to run. King c7. g4, pushing the bishop back. And now simply Magnus brings his last piece into the game, rook on fd1, the only piece not doing anything, and the deadly threat here is for the queen to come into d7 or to d8. Total domination of this d-file here, and Wesley so resigned as early as move 26, a really rare thing in the games of Wesley so, but a lovely game from Magnus Carlsen, and he really, really is showing why he's world champion at the moment perfect play from him and if he keeps this up he will be remembered 
as one of the best world champions ever. He just needs to do this for a couple more years. So he's got a while to do it yet. Thank you for watching the video and hopefully I'll be back with more in future. Bye for now.